for the Spartans. UNCG meeting Division II Belmont Abbey here this evening. The Crusaders coming in with a record of 0-2. UNCG at 0-1. And we are underway here on ESPN+. Plus. We thank you so much for spending part of your Wednesday night with us. Drew Casey here with you. The visiting squad, the Belmont Abbey Crusaders, they are in the darker uniforms, the black base uniforms with the red numbers across, heading right to left across your screen in this first 45. And UNCG will head the opposite direction. They are in the home base white uniforms, and they will move from right to left here in the first 45 minutes. Give you the starting 11 for the home side. Brandon Pulley anchors and is the keeper. He'll play behind the pipes tonight. Four in the back line, Ethan Conley, Myson Darden, Matthew Skinner, and Matthew Cutler. Across the middle, it's Nelson Oceanu, Michael Bacho, and Isaiah Vignali. And up front, Nicole Reyes, Theo Collum, Monty Osman, and Daniel Mangaroff. Home opener for UNCG. They lost the first time out against UNCW. That was a 2-0 score. Here's a first opportunity coming towards the top of the 18. Spartans looking to score what would be the ninth goal against Belmont Abbey on the season. They've been outscored by their opponents 8-1 their first two games. A 4-0 defeat and a 4-1 defeat. Moving to Liberty, Division One to get the regular season going. Almost two weeks ago now, and then this past weekend, falling to Division II power Carson Newman. This game was at home. First touch coming for Brandon Pulley, and he's able to clear out of the way. Belmont Abbey, the better of it here for the last few moments. Starting 11 for Belmont Abbey. Noah Stanger behind the defense. He'll play goal for the Crusaders, and Stanger, the freshman, having to play a second straight game. The youngster from South Africa, Ben Knuth, the starter and all-region player from a season ago, is currently in the concussion protocol, so unavailable tonight. And Stanger, the only rostered goalkeeper. And he'll have to play for the Crusaders as we play here in just the third minute of action. Give you the starting 11 for the visiting Crusaders along with Stanger. Albert Bone, Omar Gonzalez on the back line for this Crusader side. You see that Belmont Dabby packing it in already, dropping back in that defensive minded game as you would perhaps expect a Division II opponent coming to a Division I opponent. Some space here for the Spartans, and that shot will go well wide, high and right, well off target. But that's the first shot of the evening for either side. Osman the shot there, wearing number 10 instead of number 20 this evening. The Iceland native, the sophomore in Akron transfer, powerhouse in the back. In 2019, played 17 games, started 12, scored a couple of goals. Looking for his first here, though, with UNCG, played 31 minutes in the opener and did start and registered a shot that was on goal but however was well off the mark numbers drop back again for belmont abbey they've dropped eight against six attacking uncg players when speaking with the head coach of the crusaders earlier today john keating crusaders making this schedule of having to play not having to play but choosing to play elite Division I competition in the geographical proximity. They play Davidson and East Tennessee State, ETSU, in exhibitions in January, then went to Liberty 11 days ago, and now here at UNCG this evening. The mentality, 
to have a huge benefit once conference play starts in Conference Carolinas. And that actually gets going on Friday. Chance here for the Spartans. Top of the 18, moving in, looks like Reyes. Had it knocked away, now gets it back. Fighting off and moving to his right. And he'll set things up and try and reset for this UNCG team that's coming off a season back in 2019 in which they went 9-9-1. Nine, nine and one. Five and one in the regular season. Co-champions of the Southern Conference regular season, so they get that title. To finish the runner-up in the tournament, which was hosted in Greensboro at UNCG Soccer Stadium. Hard foul, top of the 18, play on, on advantage. Moving in and firing, and that's deflected away. A shot blocked, but it will result in a corner for UNCG. It'll be their first corner of the game. As we play nearly 10 minutes into the contest. Spartans ready for the corner. Sent it headed towards the back post looking for a head and it will fly wide. Another good opportunity for UNCG. Peppering the frame early and Freshman goalkeeper making his second straight start. Again, Noah Stanger. Theo Colom with that shot a moment ago. That was blocked and forced the corner. Led to the corner for UNCG. Give you the rest of that Belmont Abbey starting 11. We only mentioned Stanger between the pipes. Bone and Gonzalez on the back line, along with Linskog and Harrison Clark and Kevin Daly. Lots of defenders in the lineup, as you would expect for this Crusader, spot, Crusader side. Chance here, moving in front, double teamed and looking for space, firing in right into the waiting arms of Stanger. Noah Stanger coming up big early. The South African, the first contested shot in terms of on frame, the first save, and the best chance for UNCG thus far is stoned. Another opportunity from Cologne. Theo Cologne, the freshman from France. 70 minutes and a shot in the opener. He's got a pair already, and we're less than 10 minutes into the game. All UNCG pushing the offensive button here. First touch for Stanger, looking to hand off defensively. The rest of that starting 11. Davis McBee up front, along with Aaron Madison. Those are the two to watch for Belmont Abbey. Madison wears seven and McBee wears five. Crusaders can't get out of their own end. Tyler Stopford will play in the mid along with Jorge Aguilar. And we've mentioned the rest of the starting 11 for this Crusader side. Brandon Pulley here goes down on one knee as he sends that clearance. Looking for an outlet down long. Couldn't get it there. His fellow keeper on the UNCG roster, Nicholas Vilt, celebrating a birthday yesterday. Happy belated birthday to Nicholas. Highly recruited goalkeeper for this UNCG side. This one now a chance developing for Belmont Abbey. McBee has it here fighting, trying to get through. Great to be Madison, and he will win a corner. A corner kick coming for the Belmont Abbey Crusaders. The first four shots have come from UNCG. And Aaron Madison there, you see the senior forward who wears seven for the black-clad Crusaders with those red stripes down the center. See where he sets up. Crusaders sending two towards that corner flag. On the far side of the field, right below the UNCG practice field. Corner comes in, bending to the back post. The header can be controlled nice and easy by Brandon Pulley, the sophomore, who last year was a second team all SOCON performer and also on the all freshman team as it was his first collegiate season. He started 13 of 14 games. 
for Chris Rich in year number one at the helm of this Spartans team. Eight, four, and one was the record for Pulley officially. The team went nine, nine, and one. Again, en route to the SOCON regular season title at five and one before falling in the championship game of the Southern Conference Tournament, which was held at UNCG Soccer Stadium. Little miscommunication on the back line, but able to get it up to Davis McBee, but now taken away by UNCG, but only momentarily. Knocked away and last touched by the Spartans in their attacking third. The Abbey has the speed up front with the two we've mentioned a bunch already, McBee and Madison. So if they get free, Spartans will certainly be aware of that. But it's been all UNCG offensively. Belmont Abbey dropping seven back. Make that eight back, but now they can run. Heading left to right in transition. It's five on five soccer in the attacking third. Crusaders looking to strike first, and that through ball will go just a bit too far through. And Poli aggressively off his line can slow things down. Poli out of Holly Springs, North Carolina, and Holly Springs High School. He's an opener, played all 90 minutes, allowed two goals, and made three saves. That was a 2 0 loss to UNC Wilmington back on Saturday, February 6th, 11 days ago. This was slated to be the third game of the season for UNCG, but in this age of COVID collegiate sports, always subject to change. Here's a chance for Belmont Abbey, flicked high, and it will stay in along that far touch line, approaching the corner flag and keeping it in. Belmont Abbey developing an offensive chance. They've had one pretty good chance in this one. Looking for a second, cross in. And the header can be controlled by UNCG, and they'll look to run. But first, the Crusaders. Addison looking for space. Left foot, that will go well wide. And will result in UNCG possession and a goal kick. Scoreless action. We're in the 13th minute here at UNCG Soccer Stadium. First half, home opener for UNCG. Thanks so much for stopping by on ESPN+. Plus. Drew Casey here with you, calling this one remotely from home. Watching just as most of you are. So we thank you for joining us. It's been all UNCG offensively. The shots are only 4-2 in favor of the Spartans. But they've controlled the possession, as you would expect. And that's no surprise to John Keating and the Crusaders. They understand that. They play a hybrid style, direct and indirect. And that's directly related to their roster of Americans and international players. Here's UNCG, they're looking to get on the board. Osman has his foot knocked away. Can he keep it in? Yes, he can. And for space and dropping back. Nearly the entire team has dropped back for the Crusaders. Cross in, back post. Looks like Stanger's got it. He does. And a quick restart as the Crusaders look to run. Chris Rich at UNCG, they've been waiting for a home match for a quite a long time, more than 440 days since they last played a home match against the competition other than those clad in Spartan navy gold and white. High expectations for this team. And head coach Chris Rich certainly acknowledging that before the season. Great incoming recruiting class. Very proud of that. They're going to have to defend a free kick in a dangerous area. As a couple of Crusaders line up behind it. It's Madison 7 and McBee 10, as you would expect. 
two high-flying offensive players. Madison lines up, and back comes Davis McBee. McBee has the only goal scored this season by the Crusaders, but Madison 10 in his career. It will be Madison firing on Cage. It gets loose. And is it into the back of the net? Yes, it is! The opening goal from Belmont Abbey and Aaron Madison. The Crusaders have a 1-0 lead here early on in the first half in Greensboro. Let's take another look. Just a beautiful free kick opportunity from the senior from Statesville. And check that. It was the diving header on the second look. The diving header into the back of the net and it looked like it was McBee. Tough to tell on the initial angle, but Belmont Abbey, regardless, is up by a score of one to nothing. It's Linskog who gets credit for the goal off the free kick from Aaron Madison. So the Crusaders open the scoring here in the 16th minute. Adam Linskog picks up his fourth career goal. And the Crusaders have the advantage. It's the first lead that they've had in the first half of a game this year. Despite the 4-1 loss to Carson Newman the last time out, they did lead 1-0 on a 51st-minute goal from McBee. It'll be Linskog getting the goal on the assist from Aaron Madison. And again, coming in the 16th minute, 16th minute, Madison, the initial shot off of the free kick. And it bounced around. And then into the back of the net on a beautiful header from Linskog, who saw the loose change and got to it before the keeper, Brandon Pulley, could make the stop. Still, the offense has been controlled by UNCG. The possession, you should say. But the best opportunity, perhaps the two best, have come from Belmont Abbey. And they've cashed in on one. And they lead one to nothing here early on. For Madison, it is his 23rd career point on the assist for Belmont Abbey, third assist in his career to go along with 10 career goals in the Statesville, North Carolina native out of Career Academy and Technical School. He's had himself a very good career at Belmont Abbey College. College located just west of Charlotte, 13 miles west of Uptown. Founded in 1876, a small enrollment of just 1,200. The flag is up offside against Belmont Abbey. Partons with some space in the attacking third, but the pass just off the foot. They were looking for Osman. Money Osman, he's been active on that left side up front. The Akron transfer, just his second game in the UNCG. Navy gold and white. We have a gray base they're working with tonight. A pound drops off here, trying to get it back inside the box. Off the back heel, it's loose. And Belmont Abbey can clear. Again, dropping nearly six back into the 18 on that defensive sequence. Belmont Abbey wants the quick restart. They get the assist from the sideline there. They get the ball back into the hands of Noah Stanger, who faced 19 shots the last time out for this Crusader team. 
in a 4-1 loss to Carson Newman. He's faced four so far, and he has made one save. The shots are even at four apiece, two on net for the Crusaders, just one for UNCG. And a corner kick for both sides. Nothing doing on either corner. The lone goal coming in the 16th minute is off a free kick just outside the 18, left of the far post. Free kick taken by Aaron Madison. It was deflected in front. Couldn't tell if it was a defender or pulley who got his hands on it at first, and it worked its way off the deflection to Adam Linskog with a diving header. Just had to put it within the frame, and he was able to do so, and into the back of the net to give Belmont Abbey the lead. Very aggressive a play off his line, and nicely played by Noah Stanger with the on-rushing attack there from UNCG. Crusaders looking to build on their one goal advantage. Pass in front, they were looking for Madison. Had the assist on the first goal, knocked away. But it will be just a goal kick, and right back to UNCG. That combination of McBee and Madison up front really has been dangerous early on for the Crusaders. Davis McBee, the sophomore midfielder from Gastonia, and Gastonia Christian does have a goal on the season, and high praise from his head coach, John Keating. Perhaps the most technical player he's seen out of his area in quite some time, and the most technical on this side for the Crusaders. Four goals as a freshman, and he has a goal on the season already, so five in his career. It was a furious offensive attack early for UNCG. By furious, perhaps we should use the word controlled. Here's a chance, though, getting free. It's Osman trying to tie it up, but off his line is Noah Stanger. Impressive early on in the first 25 minutes for Stanger and is able to keep that one out of the back of the net, coming up to challenge on Monty Osman. He's been all over the field offensively on the left wing. Corner kick coming for UNCG there second. Ready for it. A crowded goal line. Headed out once, now twice by the Crusaders. They can only clear as far as that edge of the attacking third for the opposition. UNCG will play that possession-oriented style. They like to play direct, though. The opportunities present themselves, and they expect them to present themselves here this evening. Coach Rich saying in the preseason that this team should be a goal-scoring team. And if so, it certainly will be difficult for teams to keep them off the scoreboard. The chance developing off the right side. Most of the UNCG attacks have been from the left. Papal makes one miss. Now dropping back a bit further. And they'll settle in. Belmont Abbey dropping as many as nine back. They're going to pack it in. And regardless of the score, that was probably going to be the strategy. We have a whistle and a foul call. It will be a UNCG free kick, it appears. Now put it down about 30 yards out from goal. Off frame on the left. You see Myson Darden getting set inside along with Oceanu. They call Reyes. Osman taking another look here at the foul call. Push from behind. And maybe a bit of a break for UNCG. Is not sure the foul necessarily affected the play, but it was a foul. A wall of two. It's Aguilar and Daly. As the Spartans get set for the free kick. Off the right foot. Heading back post. Out and punching it so is Stanger. As far as the top of the box. Looking to be controlled, but it cannot be. 
and Val was also called Reyes, was in the area trying to clear out. Hey, Cole Reyes, the sophomore from Midlothian, Texas, and the Hill College transfer. Certainly thinking about Texas. Winter weather and millions of people down there without power and some even without water. So all our best, especially many family Reyes may have in Midlothian, Texas and the surrounding region. If you're just joining us, one nothing Belmont Abbey, a 16th minute goal from Adam Linscog after a free kick in a dangerous area from Aaron Madison, about 20 yards out, just outside the 18. Ball came loose in front and Linscog with a diving header into the right corner of the net, put Belmont Abbey up one nothing. Drew Casey here with you on ESPN Plus, the rest of our great crew at UNCG Soccer Stadium. Thanks so much for spending part of your Wednesday with us for a little SOCON versus Conference Carolinas. We're on this 2021 competitive season. Now we go down in the record books really as the 2020 season. All goes well, they'll play the 2021 competitive season in the fall. One would hope and expect on the soccer side of things. A lot going on across all seasons of collegiate sports right now with basketball, the winter wrapping up, the usual fall starting, the soccers, the volleyballs, and of course the spring sports starting up as well, college softball. UNCG has Kentucky coming into town later this week. And of course baseball, lacrosse, Mentioned basketball rounding out. UNCG men are currently in action on the road at VMI. What a turnaround VMI has had this season. And VMI currently leads UNCG 32-30. Six minutes to play first half. UNCG shooting 45% in that game from the field. VMI, though, is shooting 62%. And they have that two-point lead. But back to soccer here, of course. A couple of players go down in the middle third. Referee nearby as Harrison Clark gets back to his feet. A little winded. And the ball out. We'll see if they stop play for Clark. The senior defender from Raleigh at Millbrook High School. This is 47th career game played for Belmont Abbey. A constant in the middle of the field. Played 66 minutes against Carson Newman and 72 against Liberty. Crusaders looking to continue the attack. Can they lead 1-0? More than halfway done with this first 45 minutes in Greensboro. Crusaders moving in. It's taken away. That back line of UNCG, Conley, Darden, Skinner, and Cutler. They've been solid except for the set piece. And what resulted was the lone goal, and perhaps, and sometimes, that's all you need. Substitution will come in at the next opportunity for both sides, it appears. Chance, though, here for UNCG. Shot with the right won't go anywhere, and it can be cleared out. A pair of twos are set to come in. Number two for UNCG, that's Micah Albert, the junior forward and captain who didn't play the last time out. And George Espina for the Crusaders. And a second teammate has joined him as well. It may be Hemming Solborg Anderson. But we'll have to wait on that for just another moment. Substitution will come though for UNCG. It is, is their possession. And it will be Reyes checking out and Albert coming on. Micah Albert is on. You see that brace on that right knee fighting that bit this season. And again, mentioned did not play in the season opener. So this is his debut of the 2021 
spring competitive season here. Again, we'll wait on those substitutions for Belmont Davis. We'll see if Albert and the UNCG offense can make an immediate impact. Just based along this left side, sent in looking for Albert. And it's headed away and knocked out nicely by the Crusaders. Again, it was Osman who had the opportunity. Ball came up high, almost looked like caught the right arm of the UNCG midfielder. They play on. Pair of substitutions for Belmont Abbey. Now into the game, Georgia Spina, as mentioned, replacing Tyler Stopford. And Abdiel Prado also checks into the match. Placing Xander Herlofsson. So three new players on the field, too. It's Prado. As well as Espina for Belmont Abbey. And Albert for UNCG. More than two-thirds passed in this first 45 minutes here in Greensboro tonight. Like the winter that we've had field just in absolute great shape. Not necessarily used to a competitive match on February the 17th. Here's a nice through ball. It's Albert looking to get through. Still going through. Stanger dives, makes this up with the left paw. And Albert making that immediate impact felt. It'll be a throw for UNCG. And Albert, he does have that right knee brace on, but, but looks solid here in the early going. Sent back in and cleared. Albert scored seven goals in his career. Preseason all-conference, first team in the last season, the 2019 season. The fifth most points in the Southern Conference in 2019. Seven goals and three assists in that campaign. Play that right side in the area of Albert again. He's on it and has it knocked away, but should win a corner. And it appears so. Take another look. It's an onside play, an opportunity for UNCG. Now line up the corner. Two fingers and all set. Osman camped out right in front of the keeper, Stanger. All headed that way, up for the head and over everything. Great opportunity and a big time collision right near that back post. Stanger went up for it and the Belmont Abbey defender, it may have been the post. Let's take another look here at the bend it to the back post corner. I know that collision was with the keeper, Stanger. It was not with the post. And back to his feet, taking a beating, it's Clark. And now out comes the training staff to take a look. You always want to be extra careful when it might involve the head or neck area. And since the training staff has come out onto the field, Clark will have to come out of the game, at least for a moment to get further checked out. And depending on how quickly he can come back, that would likely determine if you put a sub in or if it's just a 10 or 15 second trip to the bench and you come back in on the next ready for play. But we'll watch closely as you see the keeper, Noah Stanger, getting set to restart play. Both keepers in this game going with the Yellow highlighter, if you will. Can't miss the keepers out on the field. So Belmont Abbey will make a sub to replace Clark after leaving the field with injury. And it is, I believe, Harrison, Harrison Clark leaving the field of play. Got that for you in just a second. Cowie, Ryan Cowie checking in for Belmont Abbey. 
as well as Fernando Garcia coming on for UNCG. First time we've seen Garcia tonight replacing the freshman Theo Colom. Colom saw a couple of pretty good chances early on, but not much in terms of the offense after that. But a solid first 30 minutes of action offensively. 34th minute action here at UNCG Soccer Stadium, which always gets a lot of love, and it got some love from John Keating, head coach of Belmont Abbey, when we spoke earlier today. One of the reasons that Belmont Abbey wanted to play UNCG this season, one, of course, the geography is favorable, Charlotte to Greensboro, two-ish hours on a good day. Here's Osman. The second, the stadium. Belmont Dabby actually has played here before multiple times in the spring, in a normal spring season when it's developmental and tournaments, jamboree style, where you might play a couple of games in a day with 20-minute halves or just a 30-minute game, something like that. And UNCG hosting a, a lot of those type tournaments and will continue to do so. Belmont Dabby actually beat UNCG about four years ago in one of those spring modified time uh, games. And they like coming back. They have the lead here in official competition through the first 35 minutes. One to nothing, 16th minute goal. From Adam Linskog, Belmont Dabby has had two very good chances, but that's been about it in terms of offensive third possession. But they've made it count. They push the numbers back, as you would most likely expect. Here's a chance for UNCG, top of the 18. See the three forwards having to go through six, seven players. And now Osman going down on the grass. Gets up silly, but appears to be okay. And that goal was off a free kick from Aaron Madison. Got loose and the diving header from Linskog. That holds up at the moment as the lone brace. One to nothing down with that, but here's a shot coming in and punched away nicely by Stanger. It will stay in off that Far end line, but only momentarily. Let's see how they rule this. Certainly last touched by Stanger, but UNCG tried to keep in, and they'll say it was last touched by UNCG. Take another look at that shot. Stanger with a diving save to his left. Oh, a Stanger turning in a very impressive game thus far. Another corner for the Spartans. Try and bend it in back post, perhaps. They go short. Perhaps a little miss hit. Works its way back to the flag. They'll try again. Winding and firing, but well wide for the Spartans on that attempt. Horn sound substitution likely coming on for both sides. And it looks like it is Clark who will come back after the aerial collision. Replace Ryan Cowie. Cowie gives him the spell as he recovers. And again, Clark is back on there. That wind and fire shot from UNCG was from Daniel Mankarov. Mankarov, his first career shot, the freshman from Duluth, Georgia. Many years with the Atlanta United developmental program. Highest level, of course, the MLS side. Yeah, they have a great following down in Atlanta, playing at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, home of the Falcons and the SEC, among many others. Pankarov, though, scored 22 goals in that developmental program over the course of 118 games. Shots advantage has now become considerable. It's 10-4 in favor of UNCG. 
Noah Stanger's come up big with a couple of very nice save. A couple of minutes ago stopped a great opportunity from Angel Bacho. Diving save to his left. Manny Osman's been in the area a couple of times in the area of Albert here. Looking to get inside some nice moves. Dropping back. Space chip. And right into the waiting arms of Stanger who can fall right on top of it. Now faced 11 shots here early on. And again, Mangaroff starting to feel a little confidence. 5'7", 140, the freshman with some speed. Well inside of 10 minutes to go here in this first half. A UNCG sub at the next opportunity. Let's see who it is. See if they allow the substitution. Now here it comes. Substitution for the Spartans. Now on number 26, Sam Cohen. For number 16, Daniel Mankarov. And Mankarov will check out after those two opportunities. And we see Sam Coed for the first time tonight. The freshman forward who came in as a sub in the opener at UNCW and played 34 minutes. The Texas guy played for the Solar Soccer Club. That's in the Dallas area. Where right, I listen to these numbers, played 40 games, started 33, and scored 24 goals. 24 goals in 40 games. Heck of a club career. Kevin Daly to throw in. Looking for Clark, and it can be taken down by Austin. He's really been all over the field in this one. Approaching the five-minute mark here left to play in the first 45 minutes in Greensboro. Drew Casey here with you at home, like many of you as well. Thanks so much for joining us, the rest of our crew in Greensboro. one nothing our score in favor of Belmont Abbey. UNCG looking for the equalizer here, cross in and deflected and an own goal. It appeared to hit the defender of Belmont Abbey on the way through and distraught are the Crusaders. And it might've been Linskog. I believe it was. Linskog who scored the first goal on a diving header gives one back in the worst possible way for a defender was trying to clear, perhaps trying to get out of the way, and it just trickled into the back of the net. No chance for the keeper, Stanger, and we are all tied up at one. Very innocent cross. So not really any Spartan in the area except well wide. It looked like Albert was six to ten yards wide to the post, and it would have been a nearly impossible angle. But you put it in front, traffic in front, and sometimes good things happen. To use a hockey analogy, you put it in front, it might hit a skate of the other team and go on in. And that's exactly what happened here. It looks like they'll officially, for now, give credit to Micah Albert on the goal. We'll have to check on that. Regardless, though, the score is tied at one. One to one in favor of Belmont Abbey and UNCG. So that was the mark, the break that UNCG was looking for. Can they take advantage? Begin off the left side. Martin's now looking to take the two one advantage. Chance developing here, a whistle and a foul appears to have been called off the ball. Taken down side left. It was Garcia who's checked in as a substitute in this first half. Draws the foul call and now UNCG with an attacking set piece opportunity in a dangerous area. 25 yards out or so. Very similar to the first 
a goal from Belmont Abbey. They had a free kick. It was a little bit closer, about 20 yards out. Let's see who lines up to take this. A combination of perhaps Cutler or Vignali. And it looks like it'll be Vignali to take out of UNC Asheville, the transfer. Belmont Abbey will set up a wall of three. Linscog Clark in there. Madison. This one is well over everything. Almost works its way into the parking lot with that protective netting. Keeps it near the playing field. So it certainly has been an active first half after the first few minutes or so. Both teams trying to figure each other out. Adam Linskog scoring on a diving header for Belmont Abbey. And also it appears Linskog responsible for an own goal. Some space here for the Spartans. Went inside and cleared away. And we have a, another whistle, another foul call, similar area to the last opportunity. This one a bit closer now. We have yet to have any cards issued in this game, and it's not going to start at this moment. Let's see who lines up to take this one. Osman appears to be in the area, but he'll step aside. We approach the final minute. Now into the final minute of this first half as Fernando Garcia readies for the free kick opportunity. 25 yards out. Right foot low into the wall. Right back to Garcia. Will he flick? He'll try. And it can be cleared by the Crusaders. Effective defense with the wall. They could only get it as far as the edge of the attacking third. Right back in. Garcia. Less than 30 seconds to play. You'll hear the 10 second countdown shortly. A great bad effect. That would have been off too far for Micah Albert, and that should just about do it for the first half of play here this evening in Greensboro. Less than 10 seconds as you hear the final seconds tick off from our public address announcer inside UNCG Soccer Stadium, and that will do it for the first half of play. A goal from Belmont Abbey in the 16th minutes from Adam Linscog before later on, well, Linscog gave it right back, an own goal, and UNCG ties it up at one with quite the break in the home opener. Chance to throw that one in to tonight's broadcast. All right, we're all set for the second half. Thanks so much for joining us, UNCG in Belmont Abbey from UNCG Soccer Stadium. Drew Casey here with you on ESPN Plus and the rest of our great crew Greensboro, and it will be Belmont Abbey to get things back and underway in the second 45 minutes of action. The teams, of course, switch directions, but if you're just joining us, Belmont Abbey in the black road uniforms with the red trim, they go right to left. UNCG in the homes, they will move left to right. Early action working for Belmont Abbey, and we saw this also in the first half. And some of the Belmont Abbey players pointing out that the clock took a few extra seconds to start, but everything is A-OK. -okay. That one's knocked out, and UNCG can possess. UNCG 0-1 on the year. Lone game back on February the 6th, 2-0 defeat. On the road, the hands of UNC Wilmington, Belmont Abbey, 0-2, losses to Liberty on the road, 4-0 on that same date, February the 6th, and a 4-1 loss to Carson Newman this past weekend at home. 1-1 one, one here, though. UNCG looking to take the 2-1 lead. Shot deflected on the way through, but it goes wide this time. The best chances in this game have just been off of a deflected leg and nearly into harm's way. Twice it's resulted in goals, one for each side, and that was almost danger again. UNCG gets a corner out of it. Let's see who's going to take this one. 
it looks like it will be Bacho, Angel Bacho, to take this one on the corner flag to the practice fields. Going back post strong, finds a head of a teammate, but not enough pace on it to get by the Crusaders. Opening minutes, second half, 1-1 game, and it was tied 1-1 at halftime. So no changes as both teams get settled in to this second 45 minutes. Belmont Abbey playing a very difficult schedule. Division II team, Conference Carolinas. Coach Keating telling me before the game, he thinks, and it was his intention to schedule the most difficult Division II schedule in the country. Belmont Abbey, so far this season, has played four Division I teams. Two of them were exhibitions. Davidson and ETSU at the end of January. Liberty already 11 days ago, and now UNCG tonight. And back in the fall when the seasons were shut down, Belmont Abbey actually got in a game against South Carolina, the Gamecocks. The 5 to nothing loss. But playing that game and all the protocols that Belmont Abbey put in place from the president's office on down at the college, John Keating definitely thought this season would happen. And he thinks that the Crusaders have certainly set a model for D2 schools to participate in these uncertain times in the age of COVID. Testing protocols and the exception of a few positive tests, it's been all good. Cross in here for UNCG. Open, quick flick, and that's well wide. Good idea. Tough to convert, but nearly volleyed in by Mangaroff there. He's had a couple of opportunities. Down is his third shot. Only one of them has been on net. One was very similar to that, but wasn't even close. That one a bit closer. Again, the freshman from Duluth, Georgia. Started in the opener, played 60 minutes, and did not have a shot. So taking a couple here tonight. Pressure on for the Spartans. Moving in. Makarov again fires, and this one's wide to the right. Probably would have missed the frame. But scooped up by Stanger and restarted. Just about five minutes in. 1-1 one, one our score. Belmont Abbey, UNCG, doing battle here this evening in Greensboro. Lots of space on this right side. UNCG with Micah Albert used this side of the field in the first half quite effectively within the final 10 to 12 minutes after Albert had come on as a sub. Albert, perhaps the most electric scorer on this roster, scored seven a season ago and a member of the preseason all-conference team, along with Nelson Oceanu. We have not seen Nelson here tonight. A bit odd, but you never know the reasons, especially in these times. Free kick coming for Belmont Debbie. It's Adam Charlton. Didn't see him in the first half, but he's come on here in the second. Belmont Debbie has really expanded the roster a bit. They only played 11 players in the first half, and it's already up to six additional players. 17 have now seen the field in this one out of a total of just 25 on the roster. So some fresh legs out there, and Coach Keating and the staff looking to build experience. And also have to keep in mind that the conference season – for Belmont Dabby begins now in, in less than 48 hours. They'll play Friday at Emanuel down in uh, Georgia to open up Conference Carolina's play, a 6.30 start. And you wonder, perhaps, why Belmont Dabby would opt to schedule in such a way. This was not a change 
this was intended to be played on this day since the beginning and the reasoning for John Keating is he wants to replicate championship week for this Belmont Abbey team. The date on the calendar that circled is May 2nd. That's the conference final date for Conference Carolinas. Well, the semifinals are played two days before. They go on a Friday, Sunday, the last day of April, the 30th. They'll play tonight, they'll play Friday. That's a two games in three days situation, just like they hope to achieve come conference tournament time. And this will be the only opportunity, unless schedules change again, which certainly is possible, that Keating and his Crusaders can do just that. They finished second in the conference the last two seasons, but both years they've bowed out in the quarterfinals in the first round. And they had success against the first place team in the regular season. So this year, the idea, challenge yourselves, even more so in the non-conference part of the schedule, to build the stamina and be ready late in the season. Not just build stamina and build confidence win a game 1-1 one, one, as we play on here in the second half Albert flicks and that will go out for a throw in rather it was Cutler who stepped up from his defensive position chance inside firing and that one goes just wide just wide from Garcia and he was protesting that he wanted a foul call it appears Unless the flag was up on the far side. Let's see here as the officials sort this one out. And Garcia. Looks like his argument has been won. As this will change from a goal kick to a corner. And our head official will discuss things over with his assistant. Robert Dale is the referee. Ben Wooten and Justin Howard, the assistants on the lines. And it is now a corner after conference. And for UNCG, it'll be their seventh here of the match. Readying for it, coming in, heading back post, header towards the goal, a second one. That's off a Crusader head. UNCG can control. Still early in the second half, 1-1 one -one game. Alive, a nice sliding tackle off the back line for UNCG. It's behind out of Cutler. Now here's Osman. Top of the 18, give and go. Some space here. Nearly off the dribble. Diving shot and just wide. A diving opportunity by Garcia. Coed was also in the area. A diving tackle nicely made by Belmont Abbey. Take another look here. Tick, tack. Just a bit off on the toe, though. Quite literally. Another corner, though. This one comes in. And last touched by Belmont Abbey. So we'll do it again. Clearance from Wilmer Torin. Another one of the newcomers to the lineup who didn't play in the first half. But come on to play here in the second. Another corner on the way. This one, middle of the six. Lots of traffic and the sheer numbers of the Crusaders can control and clear as far as the midfield. More than 10 minutes gone in this second half of play here at UNCG Soccer Stadium. We play in the 56th minute in a 1-1 game. Both goals coming in the first half. Adam Linskog scoring off a set piece after a deflection off the wall. And then Linskog off a deflection defensively led in an own goal on a UNCG cross. That was late in the first half. Tie the game at one apiece. Belmont Abbey struggling to get out of their own end. John Keating with some fierce instructions from the bench. Five Spartan attackers near the top of the 18. Cross sent in looking for Osman. 
follow-up got there in time, and Belmont Abbey can clear. They dropped seven back defensively. That opportunity. Chance here developing for UNCG. Cross into the center of the box. Plenty of space. Sliding shot. Nothing doing, and we play on. Dangerous play. Anything perhaps could have gone against the G. Now sent in another cross. Cleared out as far as the top of the 18. Controlled again by UNCG. Is the third time the charm on this rush. Space on the right. The space found. Sent in. And it gets by everyone, and it can, can be controlled by Noah Stanger. Almont Abbey really succeeding, packing it in. Defensively, the only blemish so far, the own goal off the cross. That tied the score for UNCG in the 41st minute of the first half. Both of these teams in action coming up again later this month. We already mentioned Belmont Abbey. They'll play Friday in the conference opener. Here's some space here. A lot of space on the right side. Cutting the angle down. Now the cross looking for Osman. And it's off his right foot. Now tipped and almost into the back of the net. And is it into the back of the net? It is. And UNCG has taken the 2-1 lead. Osman thought he mishit it, and it was well out of play, but he mishit it right to a teammate and into the back of the net for UNCG as Osman can't believe it. He absolutely can't believe it. He'll get an assist as we take a look. He thought he floated that up and over. Everyone stopped, and the header goes into the back of the net. It looked like it was Garcia. Smile, young fella. How about that? And UNCG is on top, two to one. This game has featured some unusual goals in the front of the goal line. All three of them have been completely unconventional. Completely unconventional. Garcia officially gets the goal, the assists from Osman, as well as from Cutler. And UNCG has a two to one advantage. How about that? Might want to file that one under an early season non-conference type of a game just with the way these goals have been scored. An own goal, a goal when everyone stopped playing. Not much wind to speak of. Osman just mishit it so poorly, perhaps, that he actually hit it perfectly. I'm sure that's what he'll say following the game. There's still much more time to be played. Dangerous tackle there off the ball. And let's see here. Official coming into view. Tough to tell, but it looked like Espina came up a bit high. And it's Albert, I believe. Nope, not Albert Cutler. Tough to tell when he was on his backside. Matthew Cutler, he appears to be A-OK, -okay, the junior defender. From Bahama, North Carolina. Won the starting job in 2019 and expected to have a much bigger role this year. Now you want to be looking to build on a lead. This cross sent in and almost bent right past Stanger. Almost overplayed it and misjudged it, but able to settle and keep it a 2-1 advantage for UNCG. Quite the odd night of goals here tonight in Greensboro. Substitution coming on for UNCG at the next opportunity. See if they have an opportunity to do so now. And it will be Albert who will check on in at the next chance. Cutler has some space, pushing the play right side, through ball, and the flag is up. That'll be a foul call. A little too much contact for UNCG. Good idea. George Espina, though, standing in strong and taking the hit. And it looks like Noah Stanger will come out 
of his cage to take this free kick. So that third goal just a few moments ago, officially in the 58th minute from Garcia with assists from Osman and Cutler. UNCG has the 2-1 advantage here tonight at UNCG Soccer Stadium. Thanks so much for joining us here on ESPN+. Plus. Not many ways to take in this game with COVID restrictions. At home myself, just like the rest of you, the rest of our crew at UNCG Soccer Stadium. Led by Colby Dunaway and Will Black here tonight. Corner kick coming here for Belmont Dabby. They trail by one, looking to tie this one up at two apiece. A couple of players over towards that corner flag. Espina, we've called his name quite a bit here since he came on as a substitute in the first half. And he's got Nate Cox short with him. UNCG has put two defenders up. Here comes the run in the corner. Back post, a little too strong. But it can be controlled momentarily. And then knocked away and just took out a couple of guys on the bench. Heck, that might have been Harrison Clark again. <laughs> he has really taken a beating in this game. A couple of tough hits on the field and just... Standing there, minding his own business on the sidelines. Took a bit of a rip. Looks like Coed has checked out for UNCG, and Albert is back on. That's exactly correct. And Garoff has also checked out. Here's some space. Colom is back onto the field. Colom had it knocked away. And Albert couldn't keep it as well. Space here for the Spartans. And again, to build on that 2 1 advantage. Backdoor cross didn't fool Belmont Dabby. They cannot clear. Is the whistle coming? Yes, it is. Foul call against the Spartans. It's their sixth. As the shot totals in this game have absolutely ballooned. 21 to 4 in favor of UNCG. Remember earlier on it was 4 4 in terms of shots. And Belmont Abbey had to lead 1 0. Since then, a bit of a different story. We approach the halfway mark of this second half. Playing in the 62nd minute. This one sent ahead. Belmont Dabby hacking off the right pass intended, but taken away by Osman and the Spartans. I haven't really called Brandon Poley's name very much in this game. He was active early on and then didn't really have much of a chance in the 16th minute on the deflection off the wall on a free kick. And since then, since that goal, he has been quiet. Base down the middle, dropping off. Here the corner flag settling. See him moving in, looking to get by his defender. He cannot, but he will win a corner. It'll be UNCG's ninth of the match. Knocked away by Ryan Cowie. Came on for a few minutes in the first half to help out Harrison Clark. He got knocked around up high on an aerial ball. Where he returned. Another corner coming for UNCG. This one heads to the back post. Knocked around, knocked around some more. Is it into the back of the net? Can't quite tell. No, it is not. That was knocked away wide to the left. Lots of traffic in front. And it will remain a 2-1 game. Let's take another look at this. Volleyed top. And just wide to the right, eerily close. But from the reactions, you could tell uh, that it was, it was wide. Looks like they also may have gotten a foul call against Matthew Skinner as well.
So the script flipped a little bit for UNCG in this game number two. In game one, they did lose 2 nothing to UNCW, but thoroughly outshot in that one, 13-4. to four. And they committed 18 fouls to UNCW's 15. So well outshot, many more fouls committed, and the opposite is true in the shot department here this evening. 21-4, to four, UNCG leads in shots. And the foul numbers are even, 7-7. Seven, seven. Speaking of Brandon Pulley, he will get a touch on the goal kick here. Spartans always very strong in the keeper position. And with Pulley coming off the all-conference season and Vilt regarded as one of the best freshman keepers in terms of recruiting in the entire nation. Could be a deep situation for years to come, the sophomore and the freshman. Through ball here, long run on the left side, one on three, and that is cleared out. UNCG will get an attacking third throw. Base on this right side as UNCG reverses the ball up two to one, looking to make it three to one. Stepping in, firing, and it just goes wide. Up over that near post, Matthew Cutler walked in and kept walking because nobody decided to step in front until he was about 12 yards out and fired that one high and wide. It would have been his first goal in two seasons. Little trouble clearing off the goal kick. That was short from Stanger, but control the now taken away. Here's an opportunity. Stanger well out of his cage, moving in, firing a pass across. Is it offside? Will it count? Yes, it will. UNCG takes the 3-1 lead. And a tough break for Belmont. I mean, they couldn't get out of their own end. And the Spartans have taken a two-goal lead. Deke and across, it's an onside play. It's close, but it is certainly an onside play. Looking at it upon further review, and the goal goes to Fernando Garcia. He's got another. Pretty good night for Fernando Garcia, don't you say? Especially a second half. He didn't even start this game. The Charlotte, North Carolina native, transfer from Northeast Texas Community College. Scored a goal in the district semifinals a year ago, season ago. Got two here tonight. Officially a junior for this UNCG side in terms of eligibility. And officially an assist will go to Theo Cologne. So he gets an assist. And UNCG is in control, leading by a score of three to one. Pass in here. That one a goal that perhaps Stanger wants back. And the first goal allowed by Belmont Abbey in the first half was an own goal. So two goals this team certainly, upon further review, you think they would want back and Actually, the second goal, too. Second goal off a play in which Manny Osman thought he had mishit a shot, and he certainly mishit it from about 10 yards out, and it floated, floated, and worked its way to Garcia right in front of the goal, and everyone stopped, and he just headed it on in. Substitution coming for UNCG. Looks like Reyes, Nicole Reyes. And he will replace Monty Osman, who has had a very active game. Does have the primary assist on the Garcia first goal. But it was 
simply a mishit shot, but he'll take credit. He'll take the point on what currently stands as the goal to put UNCG in front. That made it 2-1. It's now 3-1. It's been three unanswered goals for UNCG after the early strike from Linskog made it 1-0 in the 16th minute. The own goal in the 41st minute, late in the first half, tied it at one. And in the second, Garcia squared in the 58th and the 68th minute. Finds the back of the net and gives UNCG now that 3-1 lead. Looking to get back to 500 on the season, just one and one. Or they head to Gardner Webb next weekend, or next week, exactly a week away, Wednesday night. And then they will welcome Elon following that. Look forward to having that one for you as well. And thanks so much again for stopping by tonight on ESPN Plus. Drew Casey here with you with the rest of our crew at UNCG Soccer Stadium. Another chance for the Spartans. Moving inside, back touch. Looks like there was some room in front, though, for Cutler to walk on through. He had Albert to his right. Uh, nothing doing. Maybe he thought he had a teammate just there with him that he was setting up in a drop pass. But nothing doing. But UNCG still in control. Spartans turning it on with their speed and using this right side again. They use the left side in the first mostly, the right side mostly in the second. No surprise. That's the side we've seen Micah Albert on. The most electric players, especially with no Nelson Oceanu tonight. We haven't seen him yet. Cross inside. Lots of contact outside the 18. It's going to get it back to make Cole Reyes. Got some great crowd sound tonight from down on the field. Both of these programs certainly anxious to play anytime they have an opportunity competitively this season. It's the first game in more than 440 days here at home for UNCG. Open the season on the road in Wilmington. Some space here, tick tack and toe, but it goes wide. All traffic in front there. Could have been Garcia again. Would have had to have found the hats and gotten them onto the field. Garcia already has two. You see Garcia with Reyes and Colom. That trio, especially with Colom, looked pretty good up front, especially lately. Another corner coming for UNCG. Floating in right to the front post. Almost appeared to hit the front post and awkwardly bounced out. 12 corners now for UNCG in the match. And Belmont Abbey appears to have run out a bit of gas here in this second half. Chance inside for UNCG, sent across and cleared and controlled momentarily and now all the way out. Up there by the UNCG coaching staff. And quickly restarted. Chris Rich on the UNCG side of things was very happy with the week of training heading into this game, despite the postponement of the Davidson game on Sunday. Two squads will still try and make that game up. Such close proximity. Reyes bobbing, weaving, sending. It'll be another corner. Coach Rich was looking to 
implement his team strategy, execute at a high level, and certainly excited to play another opponent. It's been an unconventional three goals in terms of how you would draw it up technically. Whenever you can put three on the board, you'll certainly take it. Another corner here. This one popped up in the air, eventually coming down and now cleared. The way this game has gone, I wouldn't be surprised if the ball doesn't even come down. This one is bicycled well out over the top of the net far side. like Mason, Mason Darden had come all the way up into the box with that attempt. Couldn't get it to go. Less than 15 minutes to play in the match here tonight. UNCG up 3-1 to one on Belmont Abbey. Bouts are now 27-4. to four, Three unanswered goals, including two from Fernando Garcia. See John Keating there. And the rest of the staff for Belmont Abbey. Very excited about this team. And again, playing arguably the most difficult schedule in all of Division II men's soccer this season. Conference opener on Friday. More space here for UNCG. Knocked away momentarily. But great opportunities to allow almost the entire roster into the game. led for nearly an entire half scored in the 16th minute before the game was tied up just a little more than four minutes before halftime second half adjustments from UNCG and the lineup changes get some more bodies in for Belmont Abbey have favored the Spartans so far Lots of space on this near side. And for an opportunity, UNCG moving in. Pass drop back, firing, and oh, what a stop! Big time stop, big time shot, but Stanger the better of it. That was an absolute rocket shot from Cologne. My, my, let's take another look. Drop back, maybe not intentional, but boom! Stanger up to the challenge, though. And keeps it a 3-1 game. And even though three goals have been led in by Stanger, he has had moments of strength. He's had to face 30 shots in the game. And he has now made nine saves. But that man, Fernando Garcia... Two goals on the night. Here's some space for Belmont Tabby. Right in front of their own bench attacking in the second half. Old bench wants a corner. See them all there cheering on their teammates, many of them players who played in the first half. Substitution coming on for Belmont Dabby. Cowie will uh, grab a seat. Long throw coming. They'll go short with it. Attacking third action for the Crusaders. Approaching the final 10 minutes of action here tonight at UNCG Soccer Stadium. If you're just joining us, 1-1 one, one game at the break and Fernando Garcia, a pair of goals here in the second half, but the Spartans ahead three to one. Belmont Dabby looking to get back within one, but it's taken away and plenty of space. Green ahead for the Spartans. Big time tackle. And let's see here, we may have the first card of the match. Big time collision. And the whistle has been blown and the clock stopped. And there is a yellow for a dangerous tackle in transition. It'll be, I believe, on Solberg-Anderson. Take a look here. We'll see the collision. Plenty of speed. 
got a lot of the ball, but also got a lot of that right leg of the on-rushing UNCG attackman. Reyes giving a little bit of extra time to his teammate before he will take the free kick. And Garcia looking to heal up and then get ready for the hat show, perhaps. Two goals already. Reyes is ready. Firing top corner just wide. Good effort from UNCG on the free kick. Off of the dangerous tackle in the yellow card. That was issued. It's still a 3-1 game. As we move now into the 80th minute of action. Yellow card officially was on Wilmer. Warren Wilmer alone booking so far in this one. On Tabby the rush, will it result in a corner? Yes, it will. Can we make this back to a one goal game? Still time to be had, not a ton. Then we have a keeper change for Belmont Abbey. So Noah Stanger checks out and Ryan Cowie checks in. No other keepers on the roster per se, but Cowie apparently the emergency keeper. He'll get a couple of minutes of action. You never know. Again, Ben Canoost out in the concussion protocol. And that could last a couple of more contests. UNTG on rushing left. See if Cowie has to face a shot. It was a heavy workload for Stanger. See his final numbers in a moment. UNCG a chance here. That one's well wide over everything. 31 shots were faced by Stanger. 12 of which were on goal. He made 10 saves. This is Cowie. The sophomore midfielder from Davidson, North Carolina. Horn sounds and another substitution at the uh, next opportunity. I believe is now Horn may have been sounded in error. Almont Abbey, a chance developing, firing shot, long range. But it's right on goal and right into the waiting arms of Brandon Pulley. Nearly a disastrous giveaway for UNCG. Lucky they had more numbers back. Well, it's a little bit similar to the breakdown that led to UNCG's third goal of the game. Theo Colombe taking it away from the Crusaders, dropping off for Fernando Garcia, who buried it on what was essentially 2-1-0 versus the goalkeeper, who at, the mo at that time was Noah Stanger. More substitutions coming in at the next opportunity for the Spartans. But we play on as we approach less than seven minutes to play here from UNCG Soccer Stadium this evening in a 3-1 contest. UNCG ahead. Chance in the right corner. Sent towards the top of the box. Right is here. Crusaders have dropped back seven into the box. And it can be cleared. 3-1 UNCG. Garcia with a pair of second half goals. A game that was side 1-1 at halftime. 
First half goals, Adam Linskog for Belmont Abbey opened the scoring offensively off a set piece deflection. Before a cross defensively hit Linskog and went into his own net. Game though that has been controlled by UNCG. The best numbers do suggest that 32 to 5 in the shot category in favor of UNCG. Here's some space along the right side. Here's to be Reyes who drops back. This one taken away. Trying to go inside a bit. Direction of Mangarov. This one sent in long distance. Over near the corner flag. It can be kept. Cross coming. Looking for a teammate. This one miss hit, but hold on a minute. We saw this earlier. Miss hit, and it led to a goal. And going up to scrap it was Cowie. Learned from what he saw a little bit earlier. And we have a whistle and a stoppage, perhaps for substitution purposes. As that's the case. Micah Albert will check you out, and he'll be replaced by Chase Gilly. And Gilly will make his collegiate debut, the freshman from Denver, North Carolina, and East Lincoln High. Along with his brother Logan on this team. A pair of freshman forwards. He'll see some action in this final five minutes. Space here developing on the right side. UNCG looking for an exclamation point late. Moving in, knocked away. It'll be another corner kick coming for the host Spartans. We'll push their total now to 13 corner kicks. A couple more subs at the area to check in, including Chase, his brother Logan. Logan checks in for the first time, Logan Gilly. An inch taller, five pounds more, but essentially everything else the same in terms of, of course, they're twins. Fernando Garcia grabs a seat as part of that substitution. So they'll finish with two goals, corner kick. That one's headed out and we'll do it again. Approaching the spot of the match where you start to think it's at hand, but still a little more than four minutes to play. UNCG, another corner here. Another goal certainly would put this one into the books. The left side, looking for a cross. Comes in right into the waiting arms of Ryan Cowan. So he's had a couple of opportunities he's had to be positioned correctly to stop an opportunity. No credit for any saves though yet. I don't think he'll get a save officially on that shot either. When CG's content to clear the field, or at least try to from their defensive third. Here come the Crusaders though. If they'd like a result, they'll likely need a goal on this possession to win a corner and dropping back UNCG has done that they've put eight in the box and Reyes one of the only two that were not able to temporarily clear under three minutes to play now this one sent up ahead Reyes with space called his name quite a bit in this one Here's a nice through ball opportunity. Gilly has a deflected on the way through. Calling and looking for what may have been a handball. That's what the players appear to be asking for. UNCG looking good to improve to one and one on this young season. Lost the UNCW 
pick up this win and hold on against Belmont Abbey. They would move to one and one a week before their next game, as the schedule stands now. Should certainly preface with that. At Gardner Webb next Wednesday at six before a whole match against Elon. You can catch that one right back with us. Look forward to that on Sunday. The 28th. Another corner coming for uh, UNCG. They will go short and likely elect just to take some time off of the clock. They get through all the way into the box and it will result in a penalty. A penalty kick coming here late in the contest as getting free and going down in the box will result in an opportunity for a penalty kick and Ryan Cowie in between the pipes. So let's see who will take this for UNCG. Take another look. Appears to be a clear foul. Yep, it certainly is. And here we go. Approaching the ball. And twine. Four to one. UNCG takes the lead. The PK goal gives a three goal advantage to the Spartan side and they will most certainly pick up their first win of this 2021 spring season as we take another look the deliberate approach and finding the back of the net pure power from UNCG but make it a four to one advantage here at home Freshman Theo Cologne adds a goal to the one assist that he has already this evening. His first career collegiate goal. And he'll now check out after that score as we move towards the final minute of action here this evening. Belmont Abbey will fall to 0-3. Conference schedule begins Friday, less than 48 hours away. On the road at Emmanuel. Be a 6.30 start as it stands at the moment as they head to their conference schedule. Second place regular season finishes the last two years. And the goal, get past the conference quarterfinals and all the way to the final in the conference tourney. Less than 40 seconds to play. In this one, UNCG, a slow start, but perhaps to be expected in this odd season after an 11 day layoff, but they pick up the result. What will go down as their first ever win against Belmont Abbey. It's been a while. The last matchup was back in 1977, but the first win nine, eight, in nine seven, tries six. For UNCG Five, against Belmont seven, Abbey. More importantly, three, their two, first win one. of this spring 2021 season. And As the final seconds the kick off, the final and score, three, UNCG three, four, three, four, and Belmont Abbey one here tonight at UNCG Soccer Stadium in Greensboro. Belmont Abbey opened the scoring in the 16th minute. Adam Linskog off a deflection on a free kick from Aaron Madison. But then it was all UNCG. They picked up a break late in the first half. An own goal on a cross. I think Linscog, the goal scorer for the Crusaders, into the back of the net.